Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be talking about segment trees. A segment tree is basically a very powerful divide and conquer based data structure which helps us compute answers for ranges efficiently. And we can also perform range set operations or we can change individual elements in an efficient manner as well. So basically, when we're given some queries in the form of L, R, where we have to compute some answer for all elements in this range. Let's say we want the sum of elements in this range and our range is 1, 4. So we want the sum of elements who have an index between this range. And here, if we consider this bottom level, our array, and we try to calculate the answer for that query, it's these four elements, 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 9, which is 15. And if you look up here in our data structure, we have this answer computed. So how does this actually work? Well, we basically have this data structure in the form of a tree where each node contains some answer for a range. So at the very bottom, we have our initial values. And you can see that these numbers in blue, they represent the range this node contains the answer for. So at the bottom, these are just the initial values. Now if you see up here, we've combined the answer for the initial values at the bottom here and computed a new answer. We've done the same for these two. And we've combined the answers for both of them into a new one, the same on the right side of the tree. And then you finally get the whole sum of the array, which is the root node of the tree. So now you can notice here that if you start from the root, which is one node, you always double the number of nodes at each level. So if we say this is level 0, this becomes level 1, and you have two nodes, which is double of 1. Then you have four nodes, and then you have eight nodes. So in this, every node has at most two children. And now, so this the size of this tree is in powers of 2. And let's say our array has n elements. Then we will need at least 2 to the power x nodes to build our tree, where x is the smallest number such that 2 to the power x is greater than or equal to n. To store this tree, we will use an array where the root node, you can use zero based indexing or one based indexing, but I just prefer one based indexing because it's easier to use. So we'll say that the root node is located at index one of the array. And for every node, we can represent its children as, so if the root node is one, then its left child will be two into 1, and the right child will be 2 into 1 plus 1. So for every node, its left child is 2 into i, and its right child is 2 into i plus 1, where i is the index of the node. So after this, we can see that this comes out to be 2, and this comes out to be 3. For 2, its children will be 2 into 2, which is 4, and 2 into 2 plus 1, which is now 5, and 3 is two in, 3 into 2, which is 6, and 3 into 2 plus 1, which is 7. So you can see that these nodes overlap, and we can linearly store all of these nodes. Now let's take a look at operations to change elements. So in a very basic segment tree, you can change elements in log n time, where n is the size of the array. Now this is true because let's say we want to change some element, and let's say we want to change element number 3. We basically go down the tree towards this element. And when we reach element 3, we'll update its value to whatever we want. 
and while backtracking in recursion, we'll update its parent nodes. So let's say we set 3 to, so let's say if the value of this node was 1, and we set it to 0. Now this, its parent node, which stores the answer for these two nodes, it'll again be the sum of these two, which is now just 9, because we set it to 0. Now its parent node, which is 15, will now be 14. And the root node, which stores the answer for the whole array, will now be 36. So as the height of the tree is log n, because at each level you reduce the number of nodes by half, if you start at the bottom level, which is the size of the array, in the next level you will have half the number of nodes, and then you keep on reducing them by half until it reaches 1. So to traverse down the tree to some particular element, you only need to traverse log n nodes. So the time complexity to update a single element is O of log n. Now what about queries? Okay, let's say if we have a query in the form of L to R. And let's say this is 3 to 6. Now we want the sum of elements in the array from indices indices 3 to 6. So again we look at a tree and we start at the new root and then we start going down. So we go to the left child and we can see that it partially overlaps with our query. By partially overlaps I mean that 3 comma 6 partially intersects 1 comma 4. So 1 comma 4 is like this and this is 3 comma 6. So this range is useful to us from this point. Now we go down both of its children, 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 4. And we can see that 1 comma 2 does not overlap with 3 comma 6 at all. So we just don't do anything and we just return from here. And 3 comma 4, it completely overlaps with 3 comma 6. So this is the range 3 comma 6, and let's say this is 3 comma 4. So we now simply return the sum of this. We simply return this node over here, and we have 9. Now the other half of the tree, you go down this side, we can see that 5 comma 8 overlaps with 3 comma 6 partially. This is 3 comma 6, and this is 5 comma 8. So now we go down both of his children again. And now we reach this node, 7, 8, which does not overlap with 3, 6 at all. But its left child, 5, 6, completely overlaps with 3, 6. So we add its answer. Now the answer for this is 34. And let's see if this is true. 0 plus 9 plus 10 plus 15. So this is 19 plus 15 which indeed comes out to be 34. Now what's the time complexity for this? Well, we've established that a tree has log n nodes at max. And we, to reach the bottom of the tree, we only need to traverse log n nodes. So the time complexity for a query will also be O of log n. Well, technically, we can be traversing twice as many nodes, but that really doesn't matter. And you can see that we'll never actually traverse the whole tree because as soon as we find a complete overlap, we just return that answer of the node. And if we don't have any overlap, we just don't go down that tree. Okay, so how do we now actually build this tree if we're given an array? Let's take a small example where n is equal to 5. Since we recursively build this structure, we start from the root node, which is stored at the index 1 of the array. And this root node stores the answer for the range 1 to 5. Now for every node, 
its left child. So let's say this node stores the answer for L comma R. Now its left child will store the answer for L comma L plus R by 2. And its right child will store the answer for L plus R by 2 plus 1 to R. So L plus R by 2 is basically the midpoint of this range. So for 1 to 5, we get 1 plus 5 is 6 by 2, which is 3. So L comma midpoint, which is 3. And for the right child, we now get mid L plus R by 2, which is 3 plus 1. So 4 and R, which is 5. Now for this left child, we again divide it into 1 plus 3, 4 by 2, which is 1 comma 2. And the right child becomes 3 comma 3. And this now becomes 9 by 2, which is 4. So 4 comma 4. And 5 comma 5. Now here, this becomes 1 comma 1. And 2 comma 2. Basically, when L becomes equal to R, we stop going down because we know we've reached the bottom. Now, if you were to implement this recursively, the actual order of doing this would be if, let's say, we compute the left child first. So we go down here again, again until we hit the bottom. We backtrack, return to this node. We build the right child. We can't go down, so we backtrack. We build its children. We backtrack again. Its right child has not been built, so we build it. Now, since both of its children have been built, we backtrack again. Now, since its right children have not been built, we go down. And then we go to its left child. It's built now. We go up. We go back down. Build it. And we go back up here. Then we know that its children have been built, so we go up to the root, merge the answer for these two nodes, which is the answer for the whole array. Now every time we're at some node and we build the right child, we basically have to combine the answer for those two nodes and store it at the parent node. So let's denote the parent node as T of i. Now T of i will just be equal to merge t of 2 into i and t of 2 into i plus 1 where merge can be the sum in max and gcd or anything and so we do this for all nodes and our tree gets built Let's try to understand these functions in depth now. So let's look at some pseudo code for the build function. This function doesn't return anything. So it's void. Now we'll take in three parameters, which is the index of this node in our array. The range it covers. So int l and int r. So now for base case, if l is equal to r, this basically means that we're at this we're at some leaf node. 
so we simply want to set this node's value to the value of the element in our array which is a of l or a of r doesn't matter since l is equal to r after that we return now after this if we aren't at the leaf node we want to recursively build other nodes so this is the left child which will be 2 into i this will be l and as I showed you earlier this will be mid and let's just make a new variable mid which is l plus r by 2 now after this we have to build a right child which is 2 into i plus 1 the left end of this segment is mid plus 1 and the right end is r now while backtracking after we built both its children we have to answer for both its children nodes we can simply say t of i which is current node is equal to merge t of 2 into i which is a step child and t of 2 into i plus 1 where let's say merge is just the sum so so this function just returns the sum of these two numbers okay so what happens now is if we aren't at a leaf node as I showed you we will build for a left child so we go down here this function is called again and we reach this line we again go down and so on until we reach a leaf node and this con uh, condition is executed now because we return this anything after that is not executed and we reach this node now the last thing we executed for that node was this function this one so now we execute the next line which is this and we build its right child which is now a leaf this condition is executed and then we backtrack and we reach this statement so now its children have already been given their respective values we just merge them and store their answer at this node then we again backtrack and build its right chart and store the answer and so on for everything okay so now let's look at our update function so also this build function has a time complexity of O of n because we build this whole tree and we visit every node so it's O of n now let's look at the update function before this I'm going to make two new functions int lc int i which will, which will just return the index of the left child of this node so into i similarly for the right child to into i plus one this is just so that I have to write less okay this function again doesn't return anything we simply modify again we take in the index of this node in our array this segment it holds the answer for
and we need two more parameters which is the position of the element whose value we want to change and our new value similar to the build function once we reach a leaf node since this particular segment we only supports updating single elements we can set that node to the new value and return we don't exactly have to set it to this new value we could also increment or decrement or perform any other operation on it now after this the rest of it is the same as the build function so you can think of this as basically the build function but we're changing some leaf node and while backtracking we again update its parents values so oh by the way now what we have to do is since we have to traverse down to some leaf node and we don't want to traverse the whole tree we check if the position we want to change is less than or equal to our mid if this is the case then we can modify the left child l mid the position with the value else if the element we want to change actually resides in the other half of the segment tree then we call this function on the right child mid plus 1 or position and value and then now after all back tracking is done Actually, no. Sorry, man. Now, while backtracking, we just reset this node's answer. This is basically the parent node. To T of left child I and it's right child okay so what this basically does is let's say if this is a tree and we want to change the value of the element at position 4 we are at the root so since it's not the leaf and l is not equal to r we now check if the position we want to modify post position is equal to 4 we now check if it lies in the left half or the right half since 9 by 2 will be 4 cuz integer division and 4 is less than equal to 4 we have to go down the left half now again we check if it lies on the left or the right and you can see that it come out to be greater than the mid so we go down the right it'll again come out to be greater than the mid so we go down the right until l is equal to r we change its value we backtrack we update this node's answer to the operation on both of its children node we update this node's answer and now we again update this node's answer which will now be the answer for the whole array last a query function so modifier has a time complex time complexity of o of log n so so finally a query function this now actually returns an integer 
all long long or whatever data type you need to return again are three standard parameters the location of this node in the array the segment it covers the left end of the query so if this is the query and the right end of the query okay so now we basically have a bunch of base cases so first we want to check for a condition if let's say this function is at this range and a query range is actually over here and since they don't overlap at all we simply want to return zero so that this doesn't contribute to the answer or if you're querying for min or max you would return minus infinity or positive infinity accordingly So basically if the left end of this segment is greater than the right end of a query or the right end of the segment is less than the left end of this query we want to return a suitable value here in this case we are going for the sum so let's return 0 and in this if this is l r q l q r we can see that r is less than q l and the other case would be when this is l and r and r is and l is greater than q r Now the other case we want to check for is if our current segment completely overlaps with the query range. Here now we will just return the value stored at this node. So basically let's say just a this is the query range and we have any segment inside this this that or even the whole thing and we simply return that now the reason why we check if it lies inside is if you come up here and say we were querying for the range 3 comma 6 we see that no node actually fully covers that so the our answer actually consists of two nodes here which is 3 comma 4 and 5 comma 6 as none of them actually are the same as 3 comma 6 they just partially overlap so this will be 3 comma 4 this will be 5 comma 6 sorry they, they have a complete overlap so in a complete overlap we just return the value at that node now the third case is when we have a partial overlap so let's first make a mid variable because we will be using this and now a partial overlap is basically when if this is a query range and this is the useful segment and we have some useful segment here then we only want a part of the segment so we only require this part and that part for a part for our answer and let's say that this part was a complete overlap and we already have that sorry this case won't ever happen so if let's say our query range is this and a part of the answer was a complete overlap with this and a part of it is not so we have to again if this is some range then we have to go further into it 
back to force example I showed you and in this case we we'll simply recurse so let's say the result for the left child is query function on the left child and basically these two statements did not execute it means we have a partial overlap and this is the answer for the subtree on the right mid plus one now we simply return the union so if our merge function is set to sum it will just return the sum Okay, this is pretty much it. So, like I explained earlier, a query function also has a time complexity of log n. So, in problems where you have the constraint on n, like n is less than 10 to the power 5, and you also have the number of queries are less than 10 to the power 5 where each query can also be the whole array you can't naively just iterate over the whole array and get your answer but since each query takes log in time here we can actually get the final complexity for this would be Q into log n which is less than 10 to the power 8 and this will easily pass building the data structure will take O of n so order of 10 to the fifth which is also possible for this time limit thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this video like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.